Thank you for having us. Uh, Tim was a little eccentric. Uh, he didn't fit the common mold for a student. When he was uh, in elementary school, he was he was always bright, but he he would get bored, so he'd just get up and walk out of class, and I mean just head out the door and disappear. And so uh, I think it's uh, appropriate that he ended up at Athenian, where his uh, unorthodox methods were accepted and. You are all very fortunate to uh, go to a school where your individuality is encouraged. Um, I think you've seen some pictures of Tim back there. Uh, we added some posters there next to a picture of him hang gliding. Um, on one of those flights of, off the hill here, this was a homemade hang glider before they really made hang gliders like they have today. Um, he broke his back um, when he crashed at the end of this flight. Um, but that didn't stop him. He was back at it a week later. So uh, he was a little nuts. He also made all his own clothes while he was here. Of course, this was the 60s, so maybe that was the thing to do then. But he had leather pants and, and weird shirts and paisley things. And so uh, he was different. He also made this thing that we in the family commonly referred to as poof. It was about this big around. Uh, and about this thick, and it was made out of leather scraps that he'd sewn together, and it filled this thing with foam, and he just sat in this big giant pillow that sat in the house for, for years and years. He also, um, when he went to MIT, um, got involved, the John Hancock buildings there in Boston, they were having trouble with the windows falling out of the building. Well, he would go and collect up pieces, and he ended up making a cube uh, with his glass and built his own neon light inside of this cube, which I still have that works at home. So uh, he, he was very much into doing things out of the ordinary. Um, um, Mark mentioned um, one of the students. I'm going to actually read the letter that um, this Kristen wrote um, back in 2008. Uh, it's about Tim. There's something I've been meaning to, I've been keeping to myself for nearly 35 years now because it was a pivotal, pivotal moment in my life. There seems to have been nobody to share it with until now. The fact is, you were my hero once <clears throat> for a brief period in time, but I never told you because we were teenagers then and it wouldn't have been cool or even possible to express this to a boy. In late 1969, we were both up, showed up on the Athenian campus for the inaugural session of their version of Outward Bound Survival School. On day one, the junior class was partitioned into camping groups, and we were off to the Sierras. In my group, I met the boy I was going to marry 15 years later. The whole idea of rigorous training and survival was right up my alley, and for two and a half weeks, we were all introduced to wilderness situations of variable risk and provided with a requisite skill sets and mental preparation to survive them. One overriding theme brought out our leaders was that extreme conditions were, can bring out the very best in human nature, but also the very worst. Approaching the end of our session, our class was regrouped, this time according to fitness ability for the purpose of taking on a cross-country challenge of our own. You and I met for the first time in this group and were joined by three other boys. The leaders confided to us that we were being given the most challenging assignment to cover 45 miles or so of steep terrain. They impressed wisdom upon us to modify the designated route as conditions warranted and supplied us with maps, ropes, ice equipment, and extra rations. The whole class enjoyed a pep talk and was given a goal to aim for two and a half days to traverse our various trails. Then the race was on. I say race because this was indeed how members of our group viewed the challenge. We started out and continued running the trail as often as possible, sporting our 35 pound packs, ropes, and equipment. Tim, it was my first taste of extreme sports, but I suspected it was not yours. There was no time or energy for small talk or shenanigans. The five of us remained driven strangers. During the second day, I was experiencing serious pain in my left ankle. Rock climbing while wearing my pack was becoming excruciating. I shared this with a group that evening at campfire. As you know, the boys could not contain their disappointment nor hide the sentiment that I had become a burden to them. Silly girl. Things seemed a little chilly around the campfire until you piped up 
and you said that if Chris needs to go slower, this is Kristen, not me, you'd uh, stay with me. <clears throat> Relieved and released by this offer, at daybreak the others did just what they had originally intended and ran off to win the race, leaving us to come after at my pace, but consequently breaking most of the primary principles of survival, such as staying together and supporting the weakest member. But Tim, you seemed unmoved by the change in plan or the decided change in pace. You didn't let on at all that you might have been disappointed not to show a decent time for accomplishing the challenge. Quite the contrary, you appeared content, calm, and even calming. You stayed right with me, encouraging me, confiding in me, even carrying my pack and equipment in addition to yours over the steeper climbs. It was a humbling time for me because I so wanted to show that I could compete with the boys. But accompanying you, who I knew to be an accomplished athlete in this more deliberate endurance trial, lifted the whole endeavor to a much higher plane of achievement. Now I am awestruck to look back at your outreach to a virtual stranger. It was an act of maturity beyond your 16 years, motivated by wisdom and unconditional love. We, are not, we got in just after dark, within the two and a half day mark after all. Our leader was waiting for us at the trailhead alerted by the early arriving members that we were following. He embraced us as if we were champions because, for one thing, it turns out he had actually given us three days to complete this more stringent challenge. But more than that, he said we had actually gotten what he had been trying to teach everyone for two weeks, that survival is not just about individual strength and skill, but more about overcoming, overcoming a sense of personal satisfaction for the welfare of the group and about extraordinary acts of human kindness inspired by a generous spirit. Tim, your selfless act so long ago touched my life deeply and has made me a better person because in the face of adversity, you naturally chose the better way. Thank you with all my heart and soul, Kristen. So. So, uh, in, uh, in closing, integrity and honor, these are attributes that hold the whole world together. So, be your own person, follow your dreams, foster the gifts that God has given you, and do it with integrity and honor. Thank you. Enjoy the day. God bless.